Welcome back. President Trump on the world stage this week. The commander in chief heads to Europe tomorrow for a crucial summit with NATO allies where he will continue to push for increased defense spending among member states. The U.S. ambassador to Germany, Rick Grinnell, spoke about the issue on Sunday Morning Futures yesterday. And so what we are doing is urging the Germans to keep their commitment and other countries to keep their commitments to that NATO pledge, increase uh, NATO spending um, by 2024. That's the commitment that they made. And uh, although steps have been made, more needs to be done to keep that 2% commitment. Joining us right now to weigh in is White House reporter for the Washington Examiner, Gabby Marangello. Gabby, good to see you this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having What's me. What's your take on the NATO summit, given all the issues uh, and, and the U.S.? sort of standing far away from some of its allies in some of these issues. Yeah, I mean, I think this is one, going to be one of the most important NATO summits that we've seen in a long time. Um, European officials are pretty much on pins and needles waiting to see how President Trump behaves during this summit. And I think one of the most important meetings to look to is the meeting that's going to take place on the sidelines between President Trump and German Chancellor Angela Merkel. There have obviously been a great deal of tension between the two leaders um, leading up to this summit over the Germans' contribution to NATO's security. Um, and their annual spending. And President Trump has also floated the idea of uh, relocating or um, at least withdrawing some of the troop president's presence in Germany. And so I think these are issues that are likely to come up right. um, next week when they meet. And obviously, you know, as President Trump meets with other European allies as well, it's going to be interesting to see what the rhetoric is like, what yeah. we hear out of him and his officials. Lee Carter, do you, do you think that the public agrees with this notion that uh, the other NATO leaders are not are, are not paying up on their defense budgets? I think this message, absolutely. It's one of the messages that he talked It's resonating. He's talked about paying our fair share, of other countries paying their fair share. This is something that worked during the election cycle. It's something that his strength in this is resonating with the American people. Now, while the elites and other people who are looking at this say are critical of it, saying that we need to work more collaboratively, that we have to be friendlier, the American people, by and large, think this is the right approach. They trust the president when it comes to taking the hard line. Line. They're tired of people who aren't willing to, to fight for us. And so I think that it's a very, very different um, mood out with the American public than it is maybe what you, what you see in the media. In fact, Gabby, the president took some credit recently for increased NATO spending. Uh, but he says that more needs to be done. Here's, here's President Trump. Listen to this. Since I came, which is a year and a half, Almost $33 billion more is projected to be paid by those NATO nations, but it's not enough. Right. And, and this morning, Gabby, there's an op-ed in the journal uh, from NATO Secretary General out with an op-ed, and he writes this, America's NATO allies are stepping up. So he says they're stepping out. How much credit, credit should President Trump be getting for the increase in defense spending, or do you think that we're at the beginning of a, a new era for NATO and, and their defense spending? You know, I think he deserves a great deal of credit. It's been sort of remarkable to be at the White House for all of these joint press conferences and bilateral meetings that have taken place over the past few months with President Trump and his European counterparts, and to c consistently hear this country and this country and this country are spending more and more um, on the NATO Security Alliance, and that is all due to President Trump's routine calls for increased security spending, not just from the U.S., but from other countries, that they step up to the plate and contribute their fair share. And I think that that is something that has really resonated, as Lee was saying, with American voters. It's certainly something that the president pulls well on when it comes to um, American sec national security interests and, and defense spending. And so, you know, I do think that this is obviously a topic that is likely to become up, that, that is likely to come up over and over again this week, and one that the president is going to continue pushing on until he feels as though everybody is contributing uh, what they should be. Gabby, Mitch Rochelle, one of the things that um, in reading about this over the weekend is this notion of the mutual defense doctrine, which is all of us in NATO are together. And could the pressure that the administration is putting on fellow NATO members to sort of pony up, could that begin to create some divisions amongst the members of NATO that in the long run could have an impact on how united NATO is as opposed to potentially divided? 
Yeah, I mean, we have heard some concerns from European leaders about the reliability of the United States uh, security umbrella in NATO and, and whether or not that is something that President Trump is wavering on or, or threatening to, you know, as I was saying earlier, withdraw troops from places like Germany if he doesn't feel as though that country is contributing to the to the alliance in an equal way. Um, so I do I do think that this is something that's going to be continued to dis be discussed. But uh, the U.S. ambassador to NATO, Kay ba Bailey Hutchinson, told uh, reporters last week that this isn't a primary concern uh, for the administration, and n nor should it be for European allies, that the U.S. is committed to mutual defense, that we are not wavering on that whatsoever. All President Trump wants is every country to be contributing their fair share. Gabby, this is Christina Partsinova. So I just I want to know your take on uh, the pressure that the United States is putting forward on NATO. Do you think that has anything to do with Russia and tensions with Russia and the upcoming meeting with Russia? Have you heard anything? You know, there are a lot of um, working parts behind this meeting going into um, the bilateral summit with Vladimir Putin. Obviously, the U.S. wants to ensure that they are um, committed to NATO, that they look as though they are on good footing with all of our European allies, because they are expected to receive some blowback when President Trump meets with Vladimir Putin, although the—, the um, uh, Russia, U.S. officials in Moscow have already said that President Trump intends to hold Putin accountable, that he will press him on election meddling and other malicious activities throughout Europe, um, that he intends to talk about the U.S. relationship with Russia and how to improve it, but also will continue to make sure that Russia is held accountable for its actions. And I think that that's something that we're going to see stressed in the next week as President Trump meets with other European counterparts in, in, in at the NATO summit. And, and, and that meeting... Um... Uh, with Vladimir Putin, of course, on the 16th in Helsinki. That's he'll, he'll go from Europe and the NATO meeting right to uh, Finland. I want to turn to the future of Obamacare, Gabby. The Trump administration freezing billions of dollars in Obamacare payments. Another blow to this uh, uh, Obamacare legislation. It comes as insurers are getting set to uh, increase premiums. How does something like that play into the midterms? He's taking another step to fulfilling the campaign promise of dismantling Obamacare. Right. And this is something that he has long said his administration was looking at doing. Um, but it is important to note, because we're going to hear a lot of criticism in the coming days, that this is going to affect consumers, that it might limit um, insurance options, that it might increase premiums. It's important to note that this won't really take place until 2019 after the midterms. So a lot of those changes, if they do occur, um, won't really impact voters heading into November. Okay. Good, good analysis there. Uh, Gabby, good to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Gary Morangello joining us there from the Washington Examiner.